All right, we are back with another Pick'em video. Going to be going over my favorite plays for the NBA today. I also have one MLB play for us, but not the biggest slate in the world uh, across both sports. Only five games in the NBA. Obviously, some teams are playing for you know playoff positioning while other teams are getting ready for the offseason. And then uh, MLB, not the biggest slate in the world either, and a lot of those games starting early. So we're going to break down the NBA slate. I really like three plays, and we're going to go over you know deep dive like we usually do, and then we'll go over that MLB play to, to uh, end the video. Um, but if you're new to this channel, definitely go ahead and subscribe. We rip out daily content like this each and every day. Um, you know, whatever the season is, we're full year round, whether it's NBA, MLB, uh, it's hockey, whether it's uh, football in the fall. Uh, we rip out daily content like this each and every day. So definitely go ahead and subscribe. Leave the video a like and comment anything down below. It just tells YouTube to push this video out a little bit more. In terms of the video picks from last time, I usually love to pu put them up on the screen uh, and show you guys what happened. Um, but I'm going to have to talk through them for the next few days just because I'm in Florida. It's uh, a DFS dead zone down here, kind of. Uh, you can't go over. You can't use prize picks. You can't use underdog sleeper. All the big DFS platforms you can't use. You can still access uh, things like Dabble, which I've been uh, dabbling in a little bit while I'm down here. And I think Parlay play a few other ones. Uh, but the big guys like prize picks, you know, underdog sleeper chalkboard, those are not available down here. So uh, just to break it down, we went over a nerfy and a runs combo in that Guardians game and uh, both ended up missing. So the nerfy ended up uh, coming off the board and um, later on, in that, or I guess during that video, it got taken off the board, uh, ended up missing not because of the Guardians, but because of the White Sox. And then um, I think we went to Jimenez's runs on the under as well. Looked great. Ended up going to extra innings in the 10th. And Jimenez did end up getting that run. So uh, we ended up saying, hey, maybe don't play this if that nerfy doesn't come back on the board. I don't think it did come back on the board. So hopefully you guys maybe missed out on that. Uh, because the two NBA plays we went over definitely hit. Um, we looked at Miles Bridges under his first quarter rebounds. He only had one on a two and a half line. And then we went to Jokic uh, at 27 and a half points. And he dominated his line uh, just like kind of we thought. Uh, when he goes into playoff mode, no one can really stop him. And we knew he wanted that one seed. So he uh, he went out there and dominated. So I know a lot of people only took those MLB uh, NBA plays uh, because the Jimenez play by itself wasn't the best in the world. It was really that correlated combo. And uh, with the Nerfy getting taken off the board, uh, hopefully you guys you know adv uh, got advantage of the uh, M NBA plays uh, hitting for us. Uh, but let's go into the board here. First guy I want to talk about is going to be Dante DiVincenzo. I guess we'll first go over the, the NBA games real quick. Um, again, some teams are playing for playoff positioning, and that's huge for these last few games, while their teams don't really care. So Chicago and Detroit, both these teams are out of the playoff hunt. Um, I would like to go to this game, maybe even Cade, uh, but he's a game-time decision. Can't really do much there. Is he going to play? <clears throat> Potentially, but uh, there's really no reason for him to play. So he could easily sit out this game, so I'm not really attacking this game. Uh, the Knicks versus Celtics, there's a huge injury implications for this one. You know, are any of these Celtics going to play? Uh, whereas the Knicks are battling for playoff positioning where they get that three seed, the four seed, whatever it might be. And uh, I'm sure they do want the three seed just because they want, you know, more home court advantage throughout the playoffs. And they've been playing, you know, pretty well. So uh, the Knicks are definitely a team we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking Brunson. We're going to be talking DiVincenzo. But they want to go out and win this game. Uh, and even though Boston's home, Knicks are minus two and a half favorites because I'm sure a lot of these Boston players are going to sit. Uh, Houston, Atlanta, both these teams are not Atlanta, Houston, Houston and the Utah Jazz. Uh, both these teams are out of the hunt. This might be a Jalen Green show, you know, chuck as many shots up as you can. Um, Utah is absolutely skeleton crew right now. Uh, they're dealing with like Yurt Seven. They're dealing with all these different guys, a uh, bunch of rookies starting for these guys. And, uh, you know, Houston was playing extremely well, but now they have uh, they've fallen out of that playoff or the play in uh, position with the Warriors, you know, I think five games ahead of them now. So could be a Jalen Green show. You know, maybe these guys take it easy, but not a game I'm, I'm too excited about. Golden State and Portland. Golden State definitely looking for some playoff positioning. Uh, just need some news on Clay Thompson and Draymond Green before I, you know, really dive into that one. So staying away from this. Not sure why it's showing up twice. And then the game of the night is going to be this Pelicans-Sacramento game. Um, both these teams, you know, in the West, 47-32, and 45-34. and 34. Uh, They are definitely looking for play-in, play-off positioning. I know the Pelicans are right on the cusp of being, you know, a playoff team or rather than a play-in team, which is a huge difference. Um, so we're going to be talking a little bit about this game as well. So uh, first guy we're going to talk about again, we just mentioned it, Dante DiVincenzo. I'm going to go to his 28.5 fantasy score. And then uh, another guy in this game that I'm going to go to is Brunson. Actually, I'm going to go to his first half for Brunson. Uh, but Brunson in the first half against Boston. 
who Brunson has been killing it in the first halves recently. I'm going to go to his 22.5 first half fantasy score. So this is, uh, you could definitely play these guys together. Uh, Dante is more of a, you know, full game. You know, is this going to stay close or is Boston going to sit everyone and New York's going to, you know, handle business early? Uh, In which case, if you think that's going to happen, maybe you lean the Brunson line. But again, I think both these lines could definitely hit. Both of them have been playing extremely well. And again, this is going to be playoff atmosphere for one team, really, really trying. Whereas Boston might have, you know, a lot of guys sitting out and not be uh, going for it as hard as they've locked up the number one seed in the league uh, for for a while now. So um, going to be looking at these Knicks players. Let's go into their page. All right, so I pulled up Dante's 28.5 fantasy score. This is his page on Outlier. You can actually check this tool out for a free week if you want to. Uh, use my link in the description. Just let them know that I sent you there. But as you can see, it's it's very visual, easy to use. Uh, shows hit rates. It shows matchups. It shows a ton of different data points that you'll need to get an edge on these, uh, these sports bets. Um, but yeah, Dante right here, 28.5. As you can see, he's been killing it. Eight of the last 10 games he's gone over this. A lot of games he's been crushing this as well. And you know, two of the games he missed, one of these guys he missed by like one uh, fantasy score. So he's been consistently doing very well. OG is now back in the lineup, but we can see the last two games, last five games, he's gone over this. I'm not sure exactly when OG came back, but uh, you know, I know he's been playing for a few games now. Um, but we can see 2023 is a whole 42% hit rate. Not the best in the world. We really want to be looking at games without Julius Randle here. Um, so we can see all of a sudden 78% of these games he's gone over. He's a huge part of their offense, and uh, he shoots a ton of threes. 17.4 attempts uh, in terms of field goal without Julius Randle on the floor, but 12 of those are from three-point land. So hopefully he comes in, knocks down a few threes, and uh, you know, again, some of these games that he's missing, ridiculous hit rate in general, but some of these games he's missing, he's just coming up short. Uh, whereas oh, the best of the best, 60 fantasy points. The worst of the worst here is uh, 19.8, so 20 fantasy points. So I really like the ceiling better than the floor here. This is a uh, it's one of my favorite bets on the day, and uh, Dante should be able to you know crush this line. Uh, in terms of the matchup against Boston, we can't really think too much about it. I know they give up a lot of uh, statistics to the point guard position, specifically to shooting guards. You know they got to deal with Derek White, Andrew Holiday. Uh, not really sure why they give up so much stats to that point guards position. Uh, but uh, shooting guards, they do lock down a little bit better. But again, we talked about it. There might be a ton of injuries on this Celtic squad. Uh, I assume at least one of Derek White or Drew Holiday, Tatum, all these different guys, maybe all of them sit. And uh, and then we're looking at you know a pretty easy matchup for Dante here. So everything looking really good for him. Um, I think this is one of the best bets on the board right now. Um, and yeah, really, really liking it. So not, not just hit rates here, not just matchup, uh, not just my intuition on the game. We want to be looking at the odds and we can see this on DG fantasy. Uh, this is a fantasy optimizer, just kind of, a, again, a one-stop shop for market value based on what, uh, you're looking at. So I'm on the prize picks tab. You can do an underdog parlay play, all these different types of DFS platforms. You can specifically look at the plays on that, uh, on that platform. We're looking at prize picks here, 28.5. They're saying, Hey, take the over. Because four other data points all have their lines higher than 28.5. DraftKings is at 29.5 fantasy score, 29.6, 29.8 on Caesars. So you can see Price Picks line is a little bit too low, and uh, we're getting some great market value here. So this is for any different sport. I do use this very, very heavily for esports. Um, you know, at really any sport, but uh, it's it's again one stop shop. You don't even really have to know too much about the specific sport. Obviously, it helps if you do, but. Uh, yeah, it, it tells so much information and market value is huge for what we do uh, in DFS and, and pick them sites like this. So Dante looking really, really good uh, in terms of market value. And then our last data point is Rotowire. Um, you can actually get a free two days if you want to check this out. Uh, back to DG Fantasy real quick. If you want 25% off your first month, again, links in the description for all these tools. It helps me out. Uh, and uh, and I really highly recommend using all of them. Um, but here we go. Dante DiVincenzo, again, DiVincenzo. Again, my favorite projection model here, 28.5. They're projecting 34.15, uh, which is way, way higher uh, than uh, than the fantasy score line on prize picks. So everything pointing in the right direction here. It makes a lot of sense for me that the Knicks will play better than the Celtics today. And uh, hopefully hopefully uh, he, he gives a, uh, his best stuff today. Um, you know, knock down some threes, whatever it might be. So Dante over 28.5 fantasy score. That's going to be our first play. All right, so quickly, let's talk about Jalen Brunson here. 22.5 first half fantasy score. We already know the matchup with Boston. 
people might sit. That will just make his life a little bit easier. Um, but he's been crushing this line. I think you can go to a lot of his different plays, and we'll look at the odds on all of those. So you can pick and choose the way you want to attack Brunson. Uh, but if I'm playing these guys in the same slip, I think I would go with Brunson first half fantasy score. So I got his outlier page already pulled up. We can see he's hitting seven of the last 10 games, uh, which has been awesome. In 2023 uh, as a whole, without Julius Randle, I took him out of the equation here, 63% hit rate. And again, you can just see the the hit rate since Brunson has kind of entered this new level, an MVP type level where he is in that conversation. Uh, He's been absolutely killing it. So hit rate is incredible here. Again, we already talked about the point guard position against Boston. Even if all these guys go out and play, um, you know, Boston does give up a decent amount of stats to that point guard position. I'll go ahead and show that one more time. Uh, but we can see two point guards, which Brunson is. Points allowed, rebounds allowed, assists allowed is kind of middle of the road. But a bunch of points, which is where Brunson's going to do a lot of his damage. Um, so I really like the matchup. Even if no one plays on Cel- – or even if everyone plays on the Celtics, I still really like this matchup for him. We can see that in the head-to-head matchup. I think the one game that they played without Randall, uh, he had went out and got 46 PRA for that game and uh, did crush his fantasy score line as well. As I pull that up, this is back to that uh, first half fantasy. Oh, that's his full full game fantasy score. First half fantasy score, 25.7. Regardless, he had a good game in general against Boston, even when they were fully healthy. So really liking Brunson. Uh, we can't look at the odds for the full game, but again, I got all of his stats pulled up right here. A couple green bets, points, rebounds, points, rebounds, assists, points, assists, three-pointers made, everything is favored on the over here, um, which I really like to see. And then in terms of our projection model, Again, everything is blue. That means they're favoring the over. Uh, But the fantasy score, 44.5. Again, that's the full game. They're really liking this, 47.88. That should translate pretty well to the first half. Again, especially if Boston does sit all these guys and the Knicks go out to an early lead. Uh, you know, I kind of favor that uh, outcome a little bit better. So another one where po- everything pointing in the right direction. I think Knicks are a good way to go today. And these are my first two plays of the day. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is going to be CJ McCollum. And I've got two ways to play him today. I think you could do either. One of them, the odds likes a little bit better. One of them, the projection model likes a little bit better. I originally went to his 23.5 points. I think it's a great play. We're going to talk about it for sure. Uh, but I might be leaning towards his 36.5 fantasy score. So if you can't play fantasy score, definitely just go with the points here. Uh, but I think McCollum's got a really good spot for a good game. Uh, against Sacramento, this is one of the games that really matters. A one-point spread. I'll quickly pull it up. One-point spread. These Both both these teams are in the West, and both of them are looking for playoff positioning. So this should be kind of a uh, playoff atmosphere. And I think CJ will just continue what he's been doing, which has been playing extremely well, especially with no Brandon Ingram. So I got his outlier page pulled up. Uh, His fantasy score is right here. He's gone over in 90% of the last 10 games, which is awesome. Uh, In 2023, 51% of the games he's gone over. But again, we want to look at games without Brandon Ingram. That's the biggest news here. And he's hitting 87% of games without Brandon Ingram. So obviously the hit rate looks incredible here on the fantasy score. uh, And honestly, the projection model likes it. The odds don't love it as much, but it makes a lot of sense to kind of ride this hot hand of CJ McCollum. And uh, fantasy score does look pretty solid here. Uh, Now, in terms of the points, I'll pull that up as well. We can see it turns into a 29% hit rate for 2023. But again, we want to see games without Brandon Ingram. And uh, still a very good hit rate at 67%. Fantasy score is a little bit better. uh, But points allowed, you know, Sacramento does give up, you know, middle of the road to the any position, to the point guard position, their 10th, whatever you want to call CJ McCollum. He definitely runs point. But if you want to slide him into that shooting guard position or maybe put the guards together, uh, it's not the worst matchup in the world. And uh, we can see that with the head-to-head here. Um, without Brandon Ingram, they did play against each other. I guess it was this was last year. Uh, so let's just go to the games that they played each other back in January, back on, on December. He had 30 points back in January, uh, only 17 points back in December. And then again, if we want to pull up the fantasy score, he did clear that in both those games this year, um, again, back in December and then in January. So uh, hit rate, definitely leaning towards fantasy score, um, which I really like. But again, both of these are really good. Now let's go look at the odds for CJ McCollum. Got his uh, as a DG fantasy line uh, pulled up here, and we can see points is the best in terms of his lines uh, going on the over here. They're saying fifty one point nine four percent chance to go over. I will say that this line was at third it was at twenty four and a half uh, to start the day, and it has kind of been trending downward, um, which is a little bit interesting. Uh, we've seen this happen to D'Angelo Russell before, uh, and he ended up crushing his line anyway. So uh, not the worst, uh, you know, data point, data trend, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but it is something to note that his line has dropped a little bit. Um, but with the market value right now, everything is favoring the over on 23.5. 
Whereas his fantasy score, uh, we don't have a ton of data points to look at, uh, but it's more of a 50-50 line in terms of market value. 36.5 is what we're getting at. 36.2 on DraftKings, 36.5. So very similar uh, on these other sports books, 36.4 over here. So uh, in terms of fantasy, or in terms of market value for the fantasy score, kind of 50-50. Um, and then in terms of market value for the points, it is favored on the over here. So uh, in terms of hit rate and matchup, I think uh, the fantasy score is what I'm leaning in terms of odds, kind of leaning the points here. And then we'll go to our projection model and they like the fantasy score as well, which is kind of why I think fantasy score wins it in terms of the better play. Uh, 36.5 uh, is uh, is the line again. 39.47 is what they're projecting, which I love to see. And then in terms of the points, they're actually not liking his points uh, really at all. 23.5, they're projecting 21.7. So kind of another knock on the points line here. Uh, I think they're both great plays. I think he should have a great game as we can kind of see he's been doing uh, without Ingram, picked up a lot of slack, and this will be a playoff atmosphere, which uh, I think they'll, they'll, he'll go out and play his best ball. Um, but yeah, fantasy score, if I had to choose one, I think I'd go in there. Um, but again, the points line is looking really good as well. So those are our NBA plays, uh, Dante DiVincenzo and Jalen Brunson for the Knicks. First half for Brunson, I just think the value is there a little bit more. And then Dante, uh, I think I like him for the full game, especially if Boston goes out and sits some guys. If they don't, I think both these guys are still going to play, you know, kind of their best ball uh, as, as Boston's kind of coasting the playoffs in there. The Knicks are uh, looking for playoff positioning. And then CJ, we kind of just talked about both of these uh, different lines, but you could go to him either way. Um, but yeah, let's jump into our MLB play of the day. You're not going to have a ton of time to get this in, but a few hours, um, which is why it's probably not going to be in the title. This will be an NBA video, but wanted to give you guys some sort of MLB uh, play as we have been pretty, uh, pretty good to start the year for MLB. And then quickly, let's go over our MLB play. It's going to be Ezekiel Duran here. Uh, not my favorite play in the world, but again, wanted to get something for you guys in this video. And you're also not going to have a ton of time to play this one, but under 1.5 hits, runs, and RBIs uh, going up against J.P. Spears, a guy that he actually hits pretty well, uh, but the rest of his team does not. And uh, in terms of lefty, left-handed pitchers, they don't hit uh, particularly well either. So I'm going under here. I think the way he would hurt us would be getting two hits himself. Uh, but I got his outlier page pulled up right here. We can see he started the year off pretty slow, five or six games on the under. Some games he doesn't even get the full at-bats uh, getting pulled. You know, two at-bats here, one at-bat here. Uh, but even in the in the most recent games where he's gotten four at bats, he hasn't had any hits, runs, and RBIs in in those games. So uh, yes, Spears is a guy that he hits particularly well, which I don't love, uh, which is why I'm not like in love with this in this uh, with this play. Five seventy one and seven at bats, I don't love to see, but we can see a whole lot of red in terms of the other batting history for JP Spears uh, for this Texas team. Uh, Simeon Seeger, all you know, a little bit worse in terms of batting average, uh, which again, which uh, if there's not a lot of base runners. For him to get an RBI or something like that, that is good for us. So the one time he did go over, he did get two hits. That could happen in this one, but I like the hit rate uh, to left-handed pitchers specifically, not JP Spears, but just in general. Um, you see, Duran does take a little bit of a hit here, 273, as opposed to his 276 batting average. And then Spears, typically to right-handed batters, which Duran is, uh, pitches a little bit better as well. So uh, don't love the matchup specifically against Spears just because of their history in a 571 batting average in seven at bats. Uh, but typically he's been pretty bad this, to start this year. Even going back to last year, this is a 55% hit rate on the under. Uh, so I like Duran, especially considering the odds are liking this one as well. So DG Fantasy, again, 25% off your first month if you want to check it out. It has all different types of sports. We can see hits, runs, and RBIs, 1.5. They're giving it a 52.38% chance to go under based on this market value right here. So I like Duran. That's going to be the MLB play for today. And uh, that's going to do it for this video. So again, real quick, Dante and Jalen Brunson are two Knicks for the day over fantasy score, 28.5 for Dante. Uh, first half fantasy score over for 22.5, Jalen Brunson. Uh, CJ McCollum over 36.5 fantasy score, or we talked about his points as well. Uh, look at that if you want to as well. And then Ezekiel Duran under 1.5 hits, runs, and RBIs is going to be our MLB play for the day. But quickly want to shout out the Discord before we go. If you're interested in this stuff, and you want to get into a community that is always talking sports, talking props, uh, definitely check us out. It's uh, 20 bucks a month, but you can get in here for free multiple different ways. Um, but yeah, we're always talking sports, you know, people talking esports, NBA, MLB, whatever it might be. Uh, it's just a bunch of like-minded guys. Sometimes we get community plays going together and uh, we love bouncing ideas off each other, uh, you know, for the, for the most success we can get. Um, but I talked about getting in here for free. Use any of my codes for prize picks, underdog, chalkboard, sleeper, dabble, or DG fantasy. Highly recommend all of them. Uh, and they all translate to a free month of the Discord. So if you don't want to pay the 20 bucks a month, uh, you can get in here for free. 
Again, all these DFS platforms have their own perks. They're a bit different in each way, uh, but they're also giving us discounts and promotions uh, on different days. So you want to be able to take advantage of those. I'm not saying, you know, go get underdog and play it every single day. But if underdog has a free square or a discount, you might as well take advantage of it that day. And that's the perk of getting onto these. Also, a lot of them are going to have deposit matches up to 100 bucks, up to 500 bucks on Sleeper. So definitely want to take advantage of that. Uh, so it's kind of a win, win, win. You know, if you're going to you know, use my code, I get a little bit pushed back my way. And then if you uh, also go in here and, and use that, I'm going to give it back to you with a free month. So that's the way to get in here for free. But if you want access uh, just uh, without getting the access for free, you can just pay the $20 a month. But that's going to do it. I will see you guys uh, in the next video. Or if you are in the Discord, I'll see you in there. Peace out.